So before we get to the problem of ranking web search results, I want to talk about one more interesting recursive definition, the Fibonacci series. And Fibonacci numbers are one of the most interesting things in mathematics. Once you know about them, you'll see them all over the place, both in nature and in human designs. The name comes from Leonardo da Pisa, who was also known as Fibonacci. And back in 1202, he published a book called Liber Abacai. The root Abacai is the same as the one for Abacus, the calculating machine. And this translates loosely as Book of Calculation. This was the book that introduced Indian mathematics to the West. In particular, it introduced what we now know as Arabic numerals. This replaced the Roman numeral system that was then widely used. And part of what Fibonacci did in the book was show how much easier it is to do calculations using numbers in the decimal system where the place where the number is indicates its value. And as part of the book, he introduced these problems and showed how to solve them using calculation. The problem that became known as the Fibonacci numbers was one of the problems in the book. And he posed the problem like this. So at the beginning, we have one pair of rabbits. And it takes one month for a rabbit to produce offspring. And every month, a mature rabbit will produce a new pair of rabbits. So at month one, we had one pair of rabbits. At month two, well, we have the one pair we started with. And now we have a new pair. We have two pairs of rabbits. And now at month three, the baby rabbits aren't yet ready to produce offspring. It takes a month for the rabbits to reach maturity. But these two will produce new offspring each month. So we have one new pair of baby rabbits. And the rabbits that were born in month two, well, they've had a month to get bigger. So now they're mature rabbits. So we have three pairs at the end of month three. So month four, we still have the three pairs of rabbits we had. Rabbits never die in this model. And the two pairs that are mature, both of those will now produce new rabbits. So we have two new pairs of baby rabbits. The baby rabbits that were born in month three, well, now those are mature. So now we have three pairs of mature rabbits and two pairs of baby rabbits. So we have five pairs of rabbits total. And this keeps going. So the model assumed that rabbits never die that every month each pair of mature rabbits produces a new pair of rabbit babies. And it takes one month for a pair of rabbits that's born to become mature. So in month five, the three mature pairs of rabbits will all produce new offspring. So we have new offspring, new offspring, three new offspring. And the two that are a month old that were born in month four will now become mature. So this isn't a very accurate model of how rabbits reproduce. It's good for us. If it was an accurate model, it would only take a few years for rabbits to control the entire planet. But it's an interesting mathematical model. And the model that this poses, we can write in a more formal way. So each month, the number of rabbits is the number of rabbits we had in the previous month, since those rabbits don't want die. So in month five, we had the five pairs that we had in the previous month, plus all of the rabbits that were mature meaning all the rabbits that we had two months ago, which was three, if we're in month five, well, those reproduce. So we have three new pairs of rabbits plus the five that we had in the previous month. And this keeps going. So we could, in month six, we're going to have the eight rabbits that we had at the end of month five, plus the five mature pairs, one, two, three, four, five, will each reproduce. So we'll have five new pairs, and that will give us 13 pairs of rabbits. So this was the model Fibonacci developed. And the question is, can you figure out at the end of month n, given any number n, how many rabbits there will be? So the way we define this mathematically is a little different from the way Fibonacci posed the question. And that's because in modern mathematics, we usually like our series to start with a zero. If we are thinking of modeling rabbits, well, that doesn't quite make sense to start with zero rabbits. But if we're thinking of it as more general series, it does. So the way it's defined mathematically is that we say that the Fibonacci number 0 is defined as 0. Fibonacci number 1 is defined as 1. And those are our two base cases. So this is different from the other recursive definitions we've seen in that there are two base cases. Previously, all of our definitions just had one base case. And then we can define every other Fibonacci number recursively starting from these base cases. And so the Fibonacci number n, where n is some whole number greater than 1, is, well, we have all the rabbits in the previous month. So that's Fibonacci of n minus 1, plus all the new babies. 
and the number of new babies is the number of rabbits we had two months ago. Those are all the mature rabbits. That gets added to the number of rabbits we had the previous month. So that's how we define Fibonacci numbers. This defines every Fibonacci number in terms of the two base cases and, and the one recursive case. So your goal is to define a procedure called Fibonacci uh, that takes a natural number as input, so numbers starting from zero, any whole number, zero or higher, and outputs the value of that Fibonacci number defined using this recursive definition.